Hey guys, welcome to the video. A question I get all the time, should you learn two or more programming languages at the same time, or should you learn one at a time? Short answer is you learn one at a time. The problem with learning multiple languages at the same time is that when you're first learning how to code or well, program, you're gonna be tackling some concepts that might be a little difficult to learn at first, things like arrays and functions and return types and methods if you're doing object-oriented programming, object-oriented programming concepts. And so when you are learning two languages at the same time and two concepts, uh, two sets of concepts at the same time, you're adding a lot of extra things to learn for no good reason. Because even though JavaScript and Python and PHP and Java and so many other languages are very similar in many respects, the thing is you have to learn the actual code. They call that the syntax as you are learning of a language. So you have, if you have to learn the syntax and the concepts at the same time of two different languages, it could be a little much for you. So if you want to learn how to code much more quickly, yes, it's a good idea to learn multiple languages, no question. Because when you learn JavaScript, and then you jump into Python, or you jump into PHP, as an example, Every time you learn a new language, you're going to see how each of the languages handle common programmatic constructs in the same way. So for example, there's something called a function. You find functions in JavaScript, you find them in PHP, you find them in Python. When you learn what a function is in JavaScript and you see how it works there, when you learn functions in Python, even though the code is going to be different, and there'll be some nuances in terms of how Python handles functions versus how JavaScript handles functions. But by comparing and contrasting, um, when you learn that second language, when you learn functions in Python, your understanding of functions in JavaScript will just get better. That being said, and that's just one example, it's still, when you're first learning how to program, you should pick a language and learn it. Now, in my full stack course, I'm shamelessly self-promoting, I admit it, I teach a uh, few programming languages. I teach JavaScript, I teach Python, I teach PHP. In those language courses, there is crossover, right? Because there's functions, as an example, each of them. Each of them has variables, each of them has arrays or collection types, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I use each of the languages as vehicles, as ways to teach you more advanced concepts than just the coding. Now, I'm going a little bit outside of the main point of this video, but when you are learning how to code, there's much more to programming and coding than just understanding the code that you're writing. You have to understand the context in which the code is existing. So different languages will lend itself more to a certain type of programming than others, even though different languages can be used to do uh, many different things. So for example, PHP, though you could write AI code, I've seen, I've seen machine learning code in PHP, nobody uses PHP to write machine learning code. They use Python, generally speaking, maybe R, but Python is by far and away the most popular. Um, on the other hand, uh, for web development on the back end, you can definitely use Python. You use it with either the Django framework or the Flash framework. But for every Python web app that you see out there, there's probably 1,000 or 2,000 or 5,000 PHP web apps. Why? Because PHP was designed specifically for server-side web programming. Python was designed as a general purpose language. Now, they both have their strengths and their weaknesses, but what I do in my courses, they're actually all designed to work together. So you have the JavaScript, you have the PHP, you have the Python. They complement. So when people complete my foundation training, which includes HTML5 and CSS3 and JavaScript and Python and PHP and SQL, they get a really broad range and a deep understanding of programming in general, which 
sets the foundation so you can launch into any specialization you want to go into. If you want to go into mobile development, mobile native, PWA, you want to do responsive websites, you want to do WordPress and um, uh, e-commerce implementations, you want to do Python Django, it's all there for you once you have the fundamentals. The analogy I like to make, instead of teaching you 10 songs, how to play 10 songs on the keyboard or on the guitar, I teach you music, I teach you how to write songs, I teach you scales and chords and progressions and timing and tempo. Uh, this is what makes a musician. Once you understand these fundamentals of music, you can play any song ever written in the world. But if you take a bunch of tutorials where they just teach you how to play this song or and how to play that song in a keyboard or how to play this song in a guitar, that does not make you a musician. That makes you somebody who just did a tutorial. So I try to make you a true programmer in the foundation training. So why do I mention all this? Besides the shameless self-promotion, no question, it's, it teaches you why I say you should learn one language at a time and then progress to the next. If you follow this uh, pattern of learning, you will learn so much more quickly than you would if you tried to learn two or three programming languages at the same time. One step after the other, trust me, you'll get there super quick, super quick. Um, within a day, you start seeing huge uh, gains in your understanding of coding. I hope that helps. Bye-bye.